about all of those bound seams, all those bound seams that are inside. Now please don't be scared of doing bound seams. They're, they're not difficult, okay? But just practice on some scraps of fabric first. But do you know what makes them very easy? If you use a special bias binding foot, it really helps a lot. The first thing that we need to do is release our foot. Now, always remember to store your foot away properly because you might lose them. Now, it's got a little grabby bar on it, okay? So that's our bias binding foot. And we just let it snap on like that. And then put the thread in the slot. Now it has this uh, knob here, and if I release it, I can put it in different positions. But the most important thing is here. So that knob was the one that I used for sliding it backwards and forwards. And then this one here is inside there's like a little screw shank thing, a shank with a thread on it. So what we do is, we get our bias binding in, so we've got to get it in, so I'm just pushing that in there. Always leave a little bit hanging off, it just gives you more room to manoeuvre. Now I've got to put this back now, don't I? So what it, that will be doing, will be pushing the bias binding that way, so I've got to get it in the right position. And then you get your fabric, it's always tricky to start, I always find it tricky to start with all these attachments for machines. Now I can sort of, I'm trying not to put my head in the way, but I can sort of open this up, you see, which is really brilliant and I can't seem to do that with other feet, which is why I quite like this foot. Well, I really like this foot. Right, so when you've got your fabric in there, then drop your same foot. We need to make our needle go over to the left as much as possible. Right, so long as you've got it all set up properly, all of this, okay? And you make sure when you put your needle in, it's definitely like maybe less than one mil in, okay? If you're happy with that. And when you lay it halfway across your bias binding and then fold over the other half, okay? So you're sort of wrapping the edge. And then you sew. I really recommend, make sure it's tucked in. I can really recommend you holding it at the back. Now I'm in a very bad position but I want you to be able to see. So if I can do it in this position then surely anybody can do it. Right so I've laid it halfway across. I'm sewing with the right sides of the fabric up okay because I want the best side to be on the right side. And then should we have a little look? Now that, that that is totally brilliant. Now look at the back. And that was effortless. Wow, I love this attachment. Now listen, I'm hoping to have some of these that I can sell to you. And I think they're probably going to be about £5 each. So do comment below if you're interested. Okay, so that bias binding foot really look it's so so good so i want you to use the bias binding to finish off all those edges that we were talking about so every single edge all the side edges the sleevey bits just don't do around the neck and if you want to do one edge on the collar that's fine but i'm going to give you a tip right as you apply your bias binding, because we don't know what's going to happen to the end of it, always leave an overhang. I mean, you don't need that much. You can leave maybe an inch, okay? Because if it's, if it's where it's sort of come to the end, we want something to be able to fold back so we can neaten off the end of the edge. Right. Make yourself a nice cup of tea and prepare to spend not 
too long finishing off all of your edges. It will be really worthwhile. So here we go, this is the real thing now. So I'm folding that bias binding, okay, that's already got its little hemmed bits. I'm folding it and I'm just sort of squidging it in and making sure it goes underneath. And I'm leaving like an overhang at the back. I'm gonna start slowly, hoping that the fabric is trapped, which I think it is. So this is the side of the sleeve. I've left a long overhang, but too long, really. And it is a good idea to grab it behind. Right, so I'm coming to an end. and You know I said always leave a little bit of an overhang. Even though I don't need it here, I'm going to leave a little bit. So I've just sewn on a little bit there. Lift it up. So when I cut it, Look, I've left that extra bit. Now, I've left that extra bit, but I don't actually need it here. So I'm going to chop it off. But I just want you to get into the habit of doing it. That's why I did it, okay? So going around a bend, I need to put my arm here, I'm sorry. <laughs> going around the bend, I'm holding it a little bit at the back, okay, as I sew. And I'm making sure that this curve is going in. Now when you sew curves, just have in your mind that they're not curves, just sort of think of them as straight lines. So you're wrapping it around. I'm coming to the end of the armhole of the raglan sleeve and I'm up by the neck and I definitely need an overhang bit here because that then feeds into the collar. You just sew on, just for about an inch, I'd say. A couple of centimetres, pull it through a bit. Don't take it off here, just pull it through and then um, chop it off. Now I'd say that that uh, armhole curve bit is probably one of the more difficult bits for you to do. But it's still absolutely fine, okay? And then by the time it's in the raglan sleeve and it gets pressed back, it will be lovely.